And have you heard this saying or quotation? Sometimes when you are down, someone will come to you and tell you, God will not give you a burden more than you can handle. Have you heard this, this quotation or this word or this sentence or phrase? Have you heard it? God will not give you a burden more than you can handle. And, but how about the burden that God gave Abraham of sacrificing his own son? Would you think Abraham could handle that? How about when Moses, when God gave Moses a burden to lead the Israelites, millions of Israelites, by the way, and cross the Red Sea? Is it a burden, do you think, that Abraham could, uh, Moses could really handle? How about when God gave David a burden to face Goliath? Do you think David could really handle that situation by himself? How about Gideon? God gave Gideon a burden to face 132,000 Midianites. Do you think Gideon could really face or handle that situation by himself? Now tell me, would God really give you a burden? Would God really won't give you a burden more than you could handle? Sorry to disappoint you today. I really don't believe with this praise, that God won't give you a burden more than you can handle. Actually, God will give you and permit or allow things to happen to you or give you a burden more than you can handle. Let's see a praise or a verse in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Or Sorry, that's 2 Corinthians. Sorry about that. That's a typo. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 8. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about troubles we experienced in the province of Asia. We were under pressure. These are the apostles Paul was speaking in this situation. Far beyond, far beyond our ability to endure this great man of God, the super apostle whom they called. He was given a burden more than he could handle. Far beyond our ability to endure. He even described it as he even despaired his own life. As if he was put in a death sentence because of these great trials and tribulation. And now, tell me, would God really spare you from burden more than you can handle? I don't believe but there is no truth in that praise. That actually, the truth is, God will not give you a burden more than He can handle. Because God can handle everything. Actually, in this life, we cannot really handle this life with our own. We need God. And I would like to entitle this message, When You Have a Burden More Than You Can Handle. I know you love this message. I know you love this, uh, you would love this title. Because many of us, sometimes we feel that we have burdens. We have trials, tr- troubles in life. More than we can handle. So when you have a burden, more than you can handle, this title gives us, or tells us that bad things do happen to people or even to good people. And there is, that, there is this question that we always hear or, or, or read. The question that always gives us something to think about. Why bad things happen to good people? Do you have that kind of question? They have that kind of uh, confusion about God. God, why do bad things happen to good people? We're good, they're good, Lord. 
we're obeying you, we're following you, we go to church, we give our tithes, we give our offering, we listen to the word of God, we pray, we kneel down, we serve you. Why all these bad things happen to us, Lord? Yes, there's truth in that. that bad things really happen to people, to all people and even good people. Quickly, I'm going to give you why good things or why bad things happen to good people. Our text for today is 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 to 11. But I would like to give you quickly why good things happen to people through verses 3 to 6. Is that okay? Just quickly. Four points. Or, pi, or is it five points? Uh, five points why bad things happen to good people. Firstly, on verse 3, it says there that to test your faith. Bad things happen to people to test your faith. It says there, praise be to God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul wrote this text. Paul wrote the Second Corinthians. He wrote it, the, the Corinth, in order for them to know more about God and to strengthen them, to strengthen the church of Corinth. Okay? Number one, you experience bad things. You are pushed to the limit. You go through trials that you can hand, you cannot handle by your own in order to test your faith. God is not testing your faith in order for Him to know what's in your heart or what's in your mind. He actually knows what's in your heart, what's in your mind. So don't think that God is testing you in order for Him to know your faith. He actually knows everything. He's testing you so that you would know your own faith. Sometimes we don't know our faith. But in this verse, verse 3, Paul, in spite of the trouble, in spite of the sufferings he went through, he said, Praise be to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Can you praise God? Can you worship God? Can you come to church? Can you pray? Even though you're going through tough times. Even though you're already facing something or burden that you could no longer handle. Would you still say, praise God, praise the Lord, I could still give, I could still sing how beautiful name it is, how beautiful name it is. Could we still do that? So God is testing your faith. God is testing your faith for you to know your own faith. Test is not meant to fail you, but test is meant for you to pass and to go to the next level. You cannot go to, next, to the next level unless you pass that test. Isn't it? Uni, uni people. I know you're having your exams, testings, this or next week. You cannot go to the next level unless you pass the test. God cannot bring you to the next level. God cannot give you a promotion unless you pass that test. So, Abraham was tested by God. Abraham, sacrifice your only son to me. That's a burden that Abraham could not handle by himself, but only through God. But he passed the test. He became the father of nations. He became great. His name became great. That's number one. And number two, the reason why bad things happen to good people, why God allowed bad things to happen to, happen to people, number two is to display God's work. In verse 2, it says, verse 4, it says there, or 3 to 4, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles. God will comfort you in all your troubles, in all your sufferings, in all your trials. God will comfort you. He comforts us in our grief, in our loss, in our defeat, in our failure, disappointment, sickness, what have you. God will comfort you. God will display His glory. God will display His words. God will display His majesty through your sufferings and trials in life. When you are in that situation that you cannot really handle by yourself, God will display that He could do all things because He is God. Every time we are pushed to the limit, God intervenes. I'm telling you, God will intervene right now in your situation. I don't know what kind of situation you are into, but what I am sure, 
what God did to me, what God did to those faithful people in the, in the past, will also do it to you. God will display His work in your life because God is at work. God intervenes in order for Him to display His glory. That's who God is. He would like to display His power. He would like to see His, to, to, would like His children to see His power, His glory, His majesty, His miracles and wonders. God wants to display that. Yes, you are facing right now situation that you cannot handle by yourself. Wait and see. God will intervene. He's going to display His power and majesty in your life. Third point, that God, why God allow bad things to, hap- to happen is to make you a living testimony. As we continue reading, you do it in your, ho- at your, in your home. It says there, so that you... Uh, so that we can comfort, comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. You are being comforted right now in order for you to comfort other people who are also undergoing the, tri- the same trials you experienced before. Your trials right now, your trials last five years, ten years, that's not by accident. God allow you to go through that and God allow you to overcome, to overcome it in order for you to use it to testify to people who are now undergoing that same trials. Who do you think is the best person who could comfort drug addicts? Yes. The former drug addicts who overcame that drug addiction through the help of God. What type of comfort you could give to other people? Who do you think is the best person who could comfort those people going through alcoholism? I have a friend of mine who volunteered himself. There's some people there who's going through this kind of situation. I can give comfort. I could give great counsel for these people who's going through alcoholism. If you're going through with that, let me know. I will ask someone to talk to you. It's a great testimony. Your trials, your pressures right now, that's not by accident. You could use that to comfort other people, to counsel other people. That's why God allows, allows those things, bad things happen to you in order for you to become a living testimony. Fourthly, to display God's grace. The more you experience troubles, trials in life, the more you, would go, you will experience God's grace. That's why Paul said, for just as we share abundantly in the suffering of Christ, so also our comfort abounds through Christ. The more you experience hardship, the more you would experience His grace. Perhaps you can't imagine yourself losing this, losing that. You can't imagine yourself having that, having those things, or being in the situation, or being in the situation you're already thinking that you can never handle that situation. If that happens to me, I, th- I, I, don't, I can't see myself standing. I can't see myself moving on if I have that kind of problem. I'm telling you, do not be afraid. If you're going through tough times, maybe next week, next month, hardship, God will show His grace to you. Take heart. God's grace will carry you through. God's grace is sufficient for you. That's the Word of God. My grace is sufficient for you, my son. You are in trouble right now. You are, in, you are having this hardship in life. Let me tell you this. God's grace is sufficient for you. Fifth point. The reason why bad things happen to good people is to make you grow. It says there in verse 6, If we are distressed, it is for your comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which produces in your patient endurance of the same sufferings we suffer. God wants you to grow, and let, let me tell you this. That's why you're going through difficult and tough times. God wants you to grow in order for Him to promote you. He's promoting you. You need to go through this. You need to be more patient. You, you need to be more humble. You need to be more stronger. Tough times can help you 
grow. And, you're, and you are ready for your promotion. So saying this, that, they, that really bad things really happen to us, to good people. So now what? After Paul mentioned this in verse 3 to 6, he also mentioned to us how we are going to deal these things if we are having this burden more than we could handle. First is rely on God. We just continue reading on verse 9. We just saw a while ago from verse 3 to 7 the reason or the purpose of bad things, why bad things happen to us. In verse 9 it says, Indeed, we felt we have received the sentence of death. But this happened, Paul said in this chapter, in this verse, that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God. So the reason why God allows you to go through that thing, and I say, you can no longer handle it, Lord, I would like to give up. I will, I'm quitting. I would like, Lord, to surrender. Not for you not to rely on yourself, for you to be reminded that you cannot do it by your own. My son, my daughter, do not rely on yourself, but rely only with God. Remember this. When you're going through burden more than you can handle, there is a purpose. We already enumerated a while ago the five purposes, but now this, this verse also tells me that Paul, through Paul, God speaks through Paul to tell us, to remind us, do not rely on yourself. Rely on God. Sometimes God allows you to be pushed to the limit in order for us not to rely to ourselves and ourselves. Have you had people who came to you for a prayer or asked for an advice about the Bible because they had, she, they had a pay rise? Or maybe this, you had a person came to you and, and asked for a prayer and asked him to bring him, asked you to bring him him or her to church because his great his life is going great is doing great. Do you have a person in your in your life who came to you saying, "Oh, I would like to be prayed for and go to church because uh, my life is awesome. My my life is great." Do you have that? Have you experienced that? In my years of ministry, I haven't had that experience actually. But I've seen many people came to this altar, came to that door, asked for a prayer, texted me for a prayer. Really? I've seen many of them. I've heard so many of them. But they didn't ask for a prayer. They didn't ask for a prayer because they've got a promotion. Not because they've got an easy life. Not because they inherited a fortune or maybe they won a lotto. They did come like that. But very seldom you would hear that kind of testimony. Do you know what? These people who usually ask for a prayer, who usually come to church for the first time because they are being pushed to the limits. Their trials were unbearable. And these things happen for us to come to God and rely upon Him. That's God wants. But sometimes we make God as our last option. Isn't that true? We put God as our last option because we tend to rely on ourselves as this verse is trying to tell us. So do not rely on yourself. When we say relying on ourselves, it includes relying on your money. When it says relying on yourselves, you're relying your in, with your intellect, your own intellect. You're relying with your own power, with your position, with your possessions, with your great finances or connections. And if everything fails, 
we turn to God. Let me tell you, don't come to God and make Him as your last chance. Actually, God is your only chance. Don't make Him as your last chance. He is the only chance we've got in this life. Yes, you could be great, awesome for one month, two months, one year, along the road, but you need God. Do not rely with your own strength. Do not rely with your own understanding. Rely on God. That's why I put it there very vague point. Rely on God, not with your own self. Rely on the God who, ra- who can raise the dead. God described, Paul described God. Rely on the God who can raise the dead. But wait, God can only part the Red Sea. But God can also heal the sick. But God could also multiply five loaves of bread bread and two fish. Why not rely on this God? God is too great in order for us not to rely on Him. He's so trustworthy. He's so reliable not to trust God. So come on, rely on God, not with your own strength. Secondly, when you are facing, when you have a burden, more than you can bear, believe that God, God can do it. That's what we sang a while ago. God can do it again. Believe that God can do it again. Tell yourself, I believe that God can do it again. He has delivered us from such deadly peril, and He will deliver us again. That's what Paul said. On Him, we have set our hope that He will continue to deliver us. You might experience the same trial you've experienced last month, last 10 years ago, next month or next year, but again, God will deliver you again. He will do it again and again and again. How many times you found yourself in a difficult situation and yet God delivered you again and again and again. Paul has the courage to tell us about these things because he himself experienced the deliverance of God again and again and again. God can do it again and again. I am telling you that. I would like to give an example of what Paul experienced during his lifetime. This is on 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Okay? This is Paul. He bragged about this. He boasted in this. He said, five times I received from the Jews the 40 lashes minus one. You know what's that? You know what's 40 lashes minus one? If you watch your, the movie, Passion of the Christ, Jesus received. Not just 40 lashes minus one. But Paul was talking here, it's about Paul. He said, I received from the Jews the 40 lashes minus one. Have you seen the movie Passion of the Christ? You know what, the, what, what lash they, they used during the time? It has three stems like that with bones, with metals, or or something so solid, it has three stems, and it would strike and bit to a, to a prisoner. You know what would happen? It would just uh, catch or in, be inserted in your, in your skin, in your, on your flesh. Imagine that. And then, when it lodges on your body, on your skin, the, the man who's in charge would Pull it back. You see the skin, the flesh that came out of that. 49, uh, 39 times. Pastor John, why 40 lashes minus 1? Why not make it 40? Because during the Jews, uh, Jewish law, Deuteronomy, 40 lashes could kill the person. And they, do, they didn't want to kill this prison. So just 40 lashes. But Jesus, more than 40. Because Jesus was beaten or, or beaten not by Jews, but Romans. Romans didn't believe about 40 lashes minus one. But this one, Jews. But come on, not just one time. Five times Paul received 40 lashes minus one. Maybe Paul ministered for 10 years. And five times during his, his ministry, he received 40 lashes minus one five times. He's not yet healed his back, his arms, his face is not yet healed from the past lashes. 
lash, and then now he's going to be bitten again and with 40 lashes minus one, five times. And then why he continued? I guess if I experienced 40 lashes minus one just once, I would stop doing, I would, I would quit, I will just go to mountain, I will hide myself. But Paul didn't do that. He continued. Why? Because he knew God will do it again and again. He would survive. He could handle it because of God, not in his own strength. Not only that, he again continued bragging three times, I was beaten with rods. He was beaten with rods. You know what? When a prisoner is being beaten by rod, they see to it that the prisoner should, 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 should die. Not just once, but thrice. It is a metal that would be that that would with that would the, that would they would hit the prisoner in order for them to die, but not just once, thrice. Not only that, once I was pelted with stones, he was stoned. Yes, just once. But imagine, he would just experience three times uh, being beaten by rod, and now there you are, now being stoned. Not only that, perhaps he was tired. No, he was got his wound. He was uh, stoned. Now he rode a ship. But when I was in the ship, he was shipwrecked. Not just one shipwreck, but three times he was shipwrecked. Have you experienced shipwreck here? Who's riding a boat or ship here? I don't think if you're going to continue riding a ship, if once you experience shipwreck, oh, that is hell. When you experience shipwreck. Not only that, I am in danger from rivers, danger from bandits. Every day of his life, ministering, living his Christian life, he was from the, he's in the river, he's facing bandits from fellow Jews, even from his brothers and sisters, from Gentiles in the city, even in the country. And the, False believers, I have often without gone, in verse 27 it says, I have often gone without sleep. I have often gone without food. I have been called and naked. I face daily the pressure of my concern from all the church. Who is weak, he asked. I do not feel weak. That's what Paul said. Why? Because he believes that God will deliver him again and again. Now, what kind of experience you have right now in your life? You have a long, you're, you're being parked, you, 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 you could no longer park here in front. Now you're moaning. Ah, oh, my park now is already up there. But why, Paul? He didn't moan. He just continued. Why? Because God knows. He knows that God will do it again and again. You have a toothache right now, or your tummy pain, or a headache, and now you don't. You want to like to quit. You're not being. You're not being. You're not being uh, uh, appreciated. And now you moan. Let's see, Paul. Look at Paul. Sorry, the heading is not right. It should be again and again. God will do it again. Thirdly, the third point, pray to God. I will always give emphasis to prayer. I don't want you to miss this. It says there, as you help us by your prayers. Paul was speaking here. Then many will give thanks on our behalf for the gracious favor granted us in answer to the prayers of many. There is power in prayer. Do not live without depending on prayer. Two things can happen to you when you have a burden more than you can handle. Two things. First, it's either you pray or you don't pray at all. So where are you at right now? Are you praying or you're not praying because you got this burden more than you can handle? Right? I encourage you right now to pray. Push it. Push it. Push it in prayer. I would like to I made this push as an acronym. Actually, I'm not the one who made it. I just read it. Push, P means pray. U means until. S means something. H means happens. 
push, pray until something happens. Come on, just push. Push it in prayer. Just pray, pray, pray until something happens. Pray, pray until something, something happens. You have a burden more than you can handle? Pray, pray until something happens. Pray until God changes your circumstances. Pray until God changes the people who are involved. Listen to this. Pray until God changes your heart. Sometimes God already changed the circumstances. Sometimes God changed already the people around you who are involved. Sometimes God is just waiting for you to change your own heart. God cannot control you. Yes, God can control you, but he has, you have your own free will. God doesn't want to break your will, your own free will. You have to change. Pray until God change your heart. There may be delays, but continue to rely on God. Continue to believe that God will do it again and again. Surely you will get through it. If in case you don't have the zeal or the strength or the passion right now to pray because you are having this burden more than you can handle, at least someone at least find someone or ask someone to pray for you. I can pray because I, this is too much for me. Please, just ask someone to pray for you. Can you pray for me? I cannot pray for my own self because of this trouble that I'm experiencing. That's why we have life groups. Life groups, they would help you. They would pray for you. That's why we have prayer warriors in the church. They would pray for you. Do not be afraid to be prayed for. You see, who prayed for Paul here? It's not himself. It's the people around him. The brothers and sisters in Christ prayed for him. That's why he was victorious. That's why he was able to withstand all the troubles, all the trials in life. Just like what happened here to Paul. People held up him in prayer. That's why it's so important to have a friend, people who would support you through prayer. This teaches us that prayer of other people can be helpful. If you cannot pray by yourself, sometimes you can pray because it's too tough, right? I can understand that. I've been through that. But thank you for my friends, for my family who prayed for me. I encourage you. When you have the burden, more than you can handle, or too much for you to handle. Drag your feet in the morning. Force yourself down on your knees. Lord, I don't want to pray. When you are in a situation you don't feel like praying, that's the time you need to pray. Drag your feet. Come on. June, come on. Sit. Kneel down. Kneel down. Lord, I don't want to pray. Lord, I don't want to pray. Just pray. If you don't want to pray, just pray. Force yourself to pray. Because if you will not pray, you're telling God, I can do it by myself. My finances can do it. My, the people around me can do it. My connection can do it. But if you pray, that's humility. Meaning to say, you cannot do it by yourself. You only need God. And if you want to change your difficult situation right now, if you would like to change your life right now, which is in a situation that's more than you can handle. Something has to change. You need to change. It doesn't have to stay the same always for the rest of your life. Something has to change. If you are tired of that kind of situation that you could no longer handle, it's time to change. But change is difficult. Always difficult when it's time to change. Sometimes it's not just difficult, it is painful. If there is change, 
There is pain. But you've got to change. People change only when the pain of staying the same is greater than the pain of change. Do you still want, or do you wait, do you still want to wait the moment that the pain is, you can no longer bear? Do you still want to, to, to wait for that? Don't wait for that time. But sad to say, people only change when they experience severe pain, severe pain of staying the same, in the same situation. I want to change because the pain of staying the same is so painful. Greater than the pain if I would change. Is, is there so much pain, so much trouble, trial in your life right now? But because you don't want to change, everybody is being affected. Your family, your work, your studies, your church, your ministry, your personal life, your physical life. It's suffering. Why? Because you don't want to change. You can no longer, you can no longer handle it. It's time to change. Yet it's painful. I'm telling you. But you need to change. You've got to change. It starts with a prayer. Start with a prayer. Who knows the story of... I'm finishing with this. You know the story of prodigal son? Prodigal son, we know that. We know that story. That's very popular. We love that. The prodigal son, yes. They were rich. But he asked the estate his inheritance from his rich father. Yes, and then he went away, far place. And then he squandered all the money, the fortunes that he received from his father. That's sad. The time came when he lost everything. When the pain is so severe, he no longer, he, 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 he no longer had this money in his packet. Everything. That's why he hired himself to a rich farmer where he tend the pigs. And what he did was he was the one feeding the pigs. And you know what? In Jewish culture, they abhor pig. Pig is filthy. If you touch pig, you are dirty, filthy. And yet, this rich, supposedly rich young man who squandered everything found himself feeding the pig. And he even came to a point that he ate the food of the pig. That's terrible. That is something that's a burden more than he could handle. And he came to his senses in Luke 15, 17 says, he came to his senses and said, how many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. I am, I am at the end of the line. I am about to quit. I could no longer handle this. But he came to his senses and he said, I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. Come on, church. Something needs to change. It takes humility in a prayer. He prayed, Father, I have sinned against you and against heaven. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your servants. So he got up and went to his father. He changed. He prayed. He humbled himself. He came to his deepest part of life that he could no longer handle by himself. I hope that you won't, you won't wait that kind of moment, that kind of situation where 
you would go to God. I hope right now, when you, when you still can handle a little bit your situation, why not tell God, Lord, I don't want to rely on myself. I want to rely on you. The prodigal son was pushed to the limits. But he needed to experience great trials in order for him to realize that he needed God. Do you need to go through deep trials, great trials, in order for you to be reminded that you need God? It takes humility. Take a step of faith. Come to God and ask for forgiveness. Humble yourself, therefore, under God's mighty hand, and he will lift you up in due time. In 1 Peter 5, 6. I would like to repeat that again. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety, all your burdens that you cannot handle to him because he cares for you. In Psalm 68, 19 says, Praise be to the Lord, the God of Savior, who daily bears our burdens. He bears our burdens daily. Psalms 81, 6 says, I remove the burden from their shoulder, God said. Their hands were set free from the basket. In your distress, you called and rescued you. I rescued you. I answered you out of thundercloud. I tested you at the waters of Meribah. Actually, you are facing right now difficult situation because God loves you. He's reminding you that He's promoting you. God allows bad things happen to people because He loves us. He's reminding you, touching you. You just have to be humble enough to come to Him in prayer and ask for forgiveness and tell Him, Lord, I rely on you, not with my own self. When you have a burden, more than you can handle, rely on God. Believe that God can do it again and again and pray to God. In Jesus' name, amen.